Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Now, we've all talked about you know, SSDs and how great they are and using an SSD for your boot drive, but I've had a ton of people ask me, how do I use an SSD for my boot drive and configure it to boot to that particular drive and access a mass hard drive for my storage and my larger programs? We're gonna show you guys how to do that. Now, step one, pretty simple. I hope you guys can see this. Hard drives, we only see one of them. However, the system I have here clearly has a 120 gig boot SSD and a two terabyte hard drive plugged into it for mass storage. So there's some setup that we're gonna have to do in order to make this all work correctly. Now the first step to getting this configured properly is the BIOS. So you just press delete or F2 or F11 or whatever it is on your particular board Every BIOS is laid out a little bit differently, BIOS or UEFI, whichever they prefer to call it, but in general, you're gonna look for a setting called boot or boot options or boot menu. Once you go inside boot, you're gonna find a couple different things. So number one is it's gonna have some kind of laid out boot options, priorities. So that'll pick what type of device the computer will boot to first. In most cases, Choosing hard disk for this will make the computer boot slightly faster because it won't spend time, so if you had hard disk as the fifth one, then it won't spend time looking for things in one, two, three, and four slots before finally booting to it. However, if you set up hard drive as first, then if you want to boot to a CD or a USB drive, then you'll have to make sure that you rearrange it or override it whenever you want to do that. However, it's not as simple as saying, okay, hard drive, particular drive. They're not all in here. Most BIOSes or UEFIs also have a hard disk drive, BBS, or boot priority. So that way you're actually picking which of your hard drives is the one that will be booted to with the hard drive option. So here you can pick your first one and you want to make sure that that is your SSD. So we have an M4 SSD with a WD green drive for storage. So we want to make sure that's our first boot drive. That's our first boot device, and then we are ready to exit and save. Now that we're back in Windows, you can see that drive still doesn't show up. So what we have to do now is go to my computer or computer or whatever it's called. This will work in XP, Vista, 7, or 8, and go to Manage. You want to manage the computer. I'm managing you now. More specifically, you want disk management. So this will allow you to see drives that are attached to the computer but are not yet initialized or not yet partitioned. So here's that boot drive with its 120 gigs. Here is that two terabyte mass storage drive because 120 gigs is just not enough for large games and archiving videos and all that sort of hoopla. So we're gonna go ahead and we don't need to convert this in any way. Sometimes you have to initialize it first but it looks like all we need to do is right click and create a new volume. We can use pretty much the default options for everything. Next, 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 we can choose the drive letter or even mount it in an empty NTFS folder so you could create a folder on your SSD drive so the entire system will show up as C but then one of those folders would be like the mass storage folder and that would actually point at a completely separate drive. For me personally, I prefer to use a drive letter so we're gonna go with D NTFS, default allocation size, and you can actually label it. So storage, for example. Quick format is fine for this, and you click finish. Once that's done, that drive's gonna pop up as an option for you to, there we go, dump files onto, and it looks just like anything else. Now some things you're gonna have to do manually, while other things you can set up to be somewhat automated. Installing programs to your drive, you're gonna have to do manually. And another thing is it's important to choose a secondary drive that is optimal for what you're going to be doing. If you're gonna be running high performance applications such as Photoshop or Premiere or other demanding programs that are very large, I'd recommend using something like a black drive for your secondary storage. Whereas if you're just gonna be archiving videos, the green drive we showed you before is just fine. Now, when installing programs, basically it's exactly the same procedure as for where you, before where you just click next, 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 next and don't really look at anything except for this part. There will almost always be an option. Sometimes you have to click custom install or whatever else to change the drive that it's being installed to. So you can actually usually edit this just with text by changing it right there or you can browse and find where you want to put it by navigating the folder tree. 
So then what you've done is you have installed the application onto your D drive. However, it should be noted that it's not as simple as taking that D drive and plugging it into another computer and being able to run those programs. It doesn't work that way. It's pretty much tied to the computer that you installed it from. Installing programs will pretty much always be manual. There are registry edits that you can use to do it, but it's not really recommended because it can break stuff very, very easily. However, for things like downloads from the internet or uh, your media repositories, that's pretty simple. So within your browser, usually it's just a matter of going to the general settings or the download settings, finding the downloads, and again, using that browse button to navigate to somewhere else where you want it to go. So in this case, we're gonna go to storage. We're gonna create a folder called Firefox, whoops, Firefox downloads. And we can point every download that we do from Firefox to go there automatically. Then things like your documents, pictures, and music, this is really simple. All you need to do is right click, go to properties, and you can change where these library locations point to. So for example, we can include a folder, again, our storage drive, D colon slash music, just like that. And then we can exclude, remove and remove the old ones that were in there, making that the default. So now whenever we navigate in Windows, it'll automatically take us there. Now for most of the viewers of this channel, I'm sure this was a pretty simplistic sort of guide, but I think we can all agree that for some users, either they need a guide like this to go through it, or they need a simpler solution. So what I would recommend, if this is the kind of thing where you look at it and you go, yeah, my sister's not gonna be able to remember to do all this, forget it. The other solution, if you want to enjoy the speed of SSD with the storage of hard drive, is to set up a caching solution. So as long as you have a reasonably modern Intel platform, you can use SRT. Alternately, there are caching drives available, such as the Adrenaline from Crucial or the Synapse from OCZ that allow you to take any boot hard drive. So you could take a large hard drive, three or four terabytes, throw a large cache at it, and you can get that hybrid performance that way. With all of this just being abstracted away from the user, it'll appear as one drive. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.